All right, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We desire to prayers for the church for Sunday school lesson. Uh, would like to uh, thank the Lord for the opportunity that I have to uh, read His Word. You know, I was out this morning before the sun come up, and uh, it was such a beautiful time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just was looking at all the tall trees and everything, and I thought, how I'm worried to God we have that. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, the trees like uh, giants that was praising the Lord. And uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful time for me, and uh, I enjoyed it. I thank the Lord for it. And I thank you for letting me have enough grace to. Uh, Tell everybody to uh, uh, magnify his name. We'll be studying this morning on some in the book of John, the 15th chapter of John, <clears throat> concerning the, the grapevine or the vine that Jesus is speaking of here. And uh, we try to study this and we, we understand that the vine is a here is an earthly type of a spiritual truth. And he uses this a lot of times in parables, or he just uses it as examples to bring across a, uh, a thing to the Jews that he, that he talked to. And here he's talking to the 11 apostles. Uh, Judas Iscariot had already left. Uh, you can read over there in uh, 13, I believe it is chapter 13, where that Judas uh, had took the sock and that Jesus told him, he said, to be about your business or do what you got to do. And uh, so he's talking to the 11 saved people. And there's uh, uh, some, in, some of this in here that uh, people want to try to get crossed up with losing your salvation. And so we want to try to study just a little bit on this, and uh, maybe we can be a help, uh, and uh, that you can be a help to someone sometime or another when they approach you about uh, losing your salvation or, or uh, uh, things that fall falling from grace. But anyway, in chapter 15 of verse 1 of the book of John, he says, I am, in which we know that uh, Jesus told Moses when when uh, he said, uh, who, who do I tell that, uh, that I've come? And he said, you tell them that I am has sent you. Amen. And here Amen. again, he's saying, I am, identifying himself. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now, the husbandman is a farmer in that time or now, uh, and is a person who, ocu- uh, ocu- his occupation is a husband. And he is the master of the family. Mm-hmm. And here we see here that he is referring to God as the master, as the father of all. And he says, I am the true vine. So he is saying, I, I am coming out of the father. And, I'm, and, and he says, I, I, I want you to know uh, my abilities and all of this. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now, we understand that uh, people could use this as falling from grace because uh, they don't understand the Bible. But I want, I, the reason I said what I did uh, earlier about this is, this is the 11 true apostles. And he would not, in any circumstance, indicate to them that a person could fall from grace. Right. And here he's saying, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now, he's not talking, he's not talking about uh, taking them out of there and throwing them out and their soul being lost and them dying and going to hell. He's not, he's not referring to that whatsoever. But he is saying this, that... As we, uh, as we get older, and we'll see it here just in a minute, he says uh, here, 
uh, and, and I'll get to this in a minute, but he said, every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth. Now, a lot of people don't understand the word purge. And they don't. They say maybe he's punishing them or making them, uh, he's, he's uh, cutting off something from them. But no, this word purge means to cleanse. And it's just like uh, uh, used to the people uh, uh, in the spring of the year, they would take a medicine that would purge them. Mm -hmm. And they think they went all, went all, all winter and they, they needed to be cleaned out. And this is what he's saying here in that he's saying that that uh, uh, here that he uh, every branch that beareth fruit he purges he cleans it. If you are if you are producing fruit, then you are out there working. You are toiling. You are uh, exerting yourself. And and a lot of times you get weary. You get tired of producing fruit. Right. And so he's saying this. Hey, while you're doing that. I'm encouraging you. I'm cleansing you. I'm taking. I'm taking a lot of the the, if you would, the sweat and the work and the and the uh, uh, hardship off of this. Because listen, it's not an easy thing to produce fruit to a nation that is dead set on disobeying God. And so when you try to be a witness to someone. You find so many times that it's just such a difficult, it's just like pushing a wagon uphill. And so he says, I, I wash you uh, and I keep you clean, even though uh, the, the, go, the going is hard. So he says here, he, he says, uh, he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And so again, we see that this, this, Purging that we undergo is an encouragement. Right. And listen, when there's nothing this morning that will encourage you like the Holy Spirit, when you are out there and someone, in other words, says, "Hey, you don't you don't understand the Bible," and and you're trying to tell them about salvation. What about this scripture? What about this scripture? What about this scripture? Well, they're the ones that don't understand. And listen, it's a burden. It's a heartache to, to try to tell someone when you know that they're not understanding you. And all they're, a lot of times all they're doing is looking for a chance for argument's sake. But here we see here, he says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. You're clean through the word. And here this morning is the best cloth that you can use to cleanse yourself. Amen. You can use this. You can use this and listen. It will get that that old rust off of them elbows. Mm -hmm. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. This will this will cleanse you. This will keep you straight. And this will help you and encourage you. Because when you come in from uh, uh, trying to be a witness. Or just trying to, to work for the Lord. Or trying anything that, that, that to manifest the Lord. Listen. It, it takes something out of you. Amen. But here, here you can go get a fresh drink of good water, if you would, or you can get a good cleansing from this word this morning. And so here, here is this. Now, he says, now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can he except you abide in the in, in me. Amen. What he is saying here is, listen, you have got to be close to the Lord to abide in him. You've got to understand the troubles and the trials that you're going through are, are a lot of the time and most of the time something that the devil has put in front of you and in order to hinder you. But listen, that abiding in him, it, it, it's not just like you... You drive a nail in something and it lays right. Listen, you have got to exert an effort this morning to abide in Christ. You have got to, you have got to really put it, put yourself forward and concentrate on what you're doing and what you're saying in order to uh, please the Lord and, and listen to the Holy Spirit, what he says, and, and, and listen to what he says. Because Amen. this is, this is a, this is a, this is a work. 
when you're when you're abiding in Christ, it's a work, and uh, and he here he's 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 encouraging this. He's using this as an example, and he's telling the apostles here, hey, you're going to have some hard times. And listen, if you'll read after Jesus left, all of them except John was was murdered and 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 beat and everything in this world and john was too but john died a natural death i assume but all the rest of them they had all of these problems and they were they were killed and 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 they had problems all, all the time and, and even even to paul speaks of some of the problems that they had but he said here in this <clears throat> i am the vine and ye are the branches Amen. he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Amen. So now, if you're if you're wanting to serve the Lord this morning, and you have a desire to serve the Lord, listen, you have got to abide in him. That's the only way that you can do it. You cannot take it on your own and say, okay, we'll go over there tomorrow and we'll do this and we'll do that. Listen, that's his flesh. That's his flesh talking to you, and he's trying to encourage himself. But listen, it don't work that way right now. Uh, it, no, and this verse 6, now that's the one I was talking about. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now listen, he is setting an example this morning of those that does not serve him. He's, these people here that don't abide in him, they never knew him. Right. They've never known him. And, uh, you know, here, uh, even in, in, in abiding, sometimes we fail miserably. And you know, and I know too, that, that we do. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, hey, I have, to, I have to ask forgiveness so many times for the things that I don't do and the things that I mess up in. And this morning, uh, if, if I stood up here and told you, hey, I abide in Jesus every day. I abide in him. I do everything. So, listen, I'm doing the biggest liar in the world. Mm -hmm. Because I just cannot, I cannot get there, people. Right. I can't get there for this flesh. And it's, it's an impossibility for me to abide permanently every day. And listen, that's the reason why that I have to come back to the Lord Jesus and say, forgive me because I have not followed you like I should. I have not obeyed you like I should. And I, I'm weak in the flesh. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's terrible. Now, I want to see, I want to show you something else this morning. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, here is the thing about abiding. And you say, oh boy, that sounds good. Well, listen, it ain't as good as you think it is sometimes, because it requires abiding. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, you know, a lot of times we pray, and we ask God to do this, and we ask God to do that, and, and, and we never see no results of it. Well, it's because, one, one thing is, it's because we don't need what we're praying for. Another thing is that we're not abiding in Him like that we should. And a lot, a lot of the time, what we ask for, we have no need for, and it would hinder us. And so God knows best, and so we don't need to get... Uh, upset at God and say, well, he's not listening to me. He's, he's not doing what I want to do because uh, I don't get these things. But listen, it takes patience. Amen. And it takes abiding. And it takes the love of God in you this morning to, to uh, understand why that you don't get these things. And so here he says, in verse 8, here is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciple. So this is the way, this is the way that you stay close to the Lord. And this is the way that you can be a disciple of the Lord, a friend of the Lord, a follower of the Lord, uh, 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 an enjoyer of the Lord, is to produce fruit. And like I say, fruit sometimes gets hard to, but here's the thing. And, and I, I want you to know this. This morning, as we get older, 
and as we get weaker, our fruit bearing gets less. Right. And 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 you know, uh, uh, you can after this old body just wears out, you can still try to do what you will. But listen, the thing of it is, you do not bear that fruit like you did when you was young. And so, you know, that's that's an encouragement this morning, I think, to the young people here. Do your fruit bearing as early as you can. Bear that fruit because, Amen. listen, it's a necessity for you to stay close to the Lord. Amen. And and don't don't never forget, listen, this old body ain't going to live forever. Right. This old body gets old and it's, it just don't feel like getting up and doing the things that that it used to do. Now, here again, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Now, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Now, uh, I, I have something over here in 1 Corinthians, and it's uh, the chapter 13, and, and I, this thing of love. Uh, you know, so often we say, I love you, uh, and, and we, we, we try to pray to God and, 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 and offer our love to Him. And so many times, it's weak. Right. It's as weak as it can be. And a lot of times we use the word love as just a habit. Uh, and, you know, just like you say, uh, you go in the doctor's office and they say, how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. Well, I told one of the other day, I was fine, I wouldn't be here. But see, that's how, that's how the word love, we use the word love uh, a lot of times when uh, we, want to, we want to show something, you know, and we want to look good to them. But the thing of it is, we don't love uh, as much as we say we love. Because love is something that Jesus showed us the definition for love. Amen. He said, uh, greater love hath this that no man lay down his life for his brother. Now, that's love, people. And that's what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. So, Amen. in... in uh, and 13, and of course it's familiar scripture, but the thing of this, we need to, we need to remember this in, in verse, uh, in verse uh, 11, notice here, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Hey, well. Of course, we know that there's, there's got to be a change in your, so, for now we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. And so, what he's saying is, I know in part. We don't know it all, and we can't know it all while we're in this flesh. And he knows in part, Paul is writing to the, the letter here, and he knows in part because his spirit knows in part. But he don't know it all. And so notice, he says, I know even also, uh, uh, and now abide a faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Amen. And we this morning need to understand and practice this more than we do with a sincere heart, not with our, our mouth, because you know what James says about the little tongue. Right. It's unrooted. And you can walk up to somebody and say, I love you. And, uh, you know, it sounds good to them, but the thing of it is, a lot of times, it don't, it, it don't mean anything. And so, we need, to, we, we need to remember these things. Now, back in our lesson again this morning, he says here in verse 10, If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. Now his love was, his love, his requirement, his, his desire for Jesus was that he come to this world and, be, and offer himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And that's the only way that the, the, that's the only sacrifice that could be offered. And the love of God was that, that, that people would have an opportunity to uh, be in heaven with him. And that was that's 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 why he 
he, he said here uh, in, uh, about his life, he said, I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Amen. So this love that, that we're talking about this morning uh, and this abiding will bring joy in your life. Amen. And you know, you won't see people sitting around, woe is me, woe is me, because uh, even this morning when uh, I walked out, hey, you, you, you can't, uh, you can't explain the joy. Amen. You can't explain that joy. Uh, you can't explain that feeling. You can't explain uh, the tears uh, from even just, you know, you say, well, you walked out and looked at the tree. Well, listen, there was more than that. Amen. Uh, and and I, I know this morning that there's a, there's a love between me and God that I can't, I can't understand. There's a love between me and Jesus Christ. I cannot understand. Right. Because, listen, this flesh fights me day and night all the time. And I can't understand it. But one day, uh, I, I won't be in part. I, there won't be part of me that's sinful and part of me that's spiritual. I won't be in that part no more. Because when I die, this old flesh is going to go to the ground, which is the, the one that is causing me so many problems. And then it's going to be resurrected and be glorified. Amen. And it's going to be attached to or joined to that part that has already went to heaven. And it will no, there won't be any part no more. No more part. It's all one. It's all one accord. And we can walk through heaven glorifying the, the name of God and praising God. And when we see somebody, I know, I know we'll say, I love you. And it'll be it'll mean a whole lot more. Amen. It'll be a different love than it is now. So uh, these these are some of the things I that uh, I've been thinking about this week and, and hoping that it would encourage you some because I want to I want to be an encouragement. Mm -hmm. And uh, when God when God gives me something that encourages me, hey, I love to pass it on. I want to tell somebody else because hey, listen, it's done something for me. Amen. So here again. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I love you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend, which Jesus Christ did. Amen. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you my servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And he's, he's, he's talking to these apostles now, and he said, all things that I've heard of my Father, I've told you. And a lot of times they didn't understand what he was talking about, but later on they did. And here he says, uh, here, uh, ye, are, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, Amen. and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, I want to read something to you in John 4, just verse 7 here. John 4 and verse 14, just listen if you don't want to turn there, but in 4, 14, uh, no, it's, four, it's a 4, yeah, 4, 14, let me get to it just a minute here. I'll find it. Uh, yeah, 414. But who's there? Okay, he's at the water. It's, he's at the well talking to this woman. And we were talking about people using these, some of these scriptures here to prove that you can be fall, you can fall from grace. Now notice what he told the woman. Uh, in verse 14. Right. And, and uh, uh, in verse 14. But whosoever, talking to the woman, Jesus talking to the woman, Drinketh of the of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst. Now, why I'm bringing this to you is uh, that he, he he's talking over here uh, uh, about abiding in him, and if, and if, and here he says, uh, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. And and people want to use this as him cutting the vine off or the branch off because. It's not bearing fruit. 
Well, listen, maybe in a life thing, I hear the, the, the one that's raising the vine might go and prove it, prune it. But listen, Jesus or God did never take away a, a Christian that has, that has served him and has bared fruit and has got to the point where that they can't bear fruit. He'll not remove that and cast them into hell. And that's just exactly what this right here says. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And now it don't sound like that he's cutting nobody off. Now I got another one here in John 10. John 10 and it's uh, verse 28. John 10, 28. Notice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. Now that's the one that's, that's abiding in the, in, the, in the vine. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And so when, they, when, when we read these scriptures here, try to understand that Jesus is not talking about falling from grace. Right. But he is warning, he is warning the apostles. You warn these people that you preach to about serving me. And listen, that they're... If they don't abide in me, they are going to go to hell. And, and it's not that they have abided, because the Pharisees over here in 13 come to him and was complaining about uh, the disciples not washing their hands before they eat. And, uh, and he, told the, he told them, he says, hey, it's not what goes in that, that, that defiles a man, but it's what comes out. Right. And so, listen, uh, uh, a person, uh, like I said a while ago, a person can get in a state of uh, sickness or, or mental illness or whatever that he can't bear fruit. But listen, God will not take and say, well, break that off and say, well, you're not bearing fruit. Uh, because that's not, that's not the love of God in you. And, and, and I want you to know this morning that uh, you can use these scriptures to talk to these people about... Uh, 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 salvation and so many of them say well what if I, what if I fall what if I can't hold out faithful listen there's no holding out faithful right there's right. no holding out faithful you don't have to hold on to the vine the vine will hold you Amen. and so this morning uh, I hope this will encourage those that are listening those that are here uh, and uh uh, I ask uh, the church to, to remember those that are listening to this because, listen, there's nothing no greater than to be able to speak to someone some, someplace else and to warn them and tell them because what we have, what we have read is from God's Word. Amen. And it's true, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with God's Word. And uh, all it does is just takes understanding to, to live like God would have you. So this morning, consider the bearing of fruit. Consider how that you love, and consider that uh, it is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. It is, it, and we so easily forget how how great a thing it is to love one another. You know, yeah. we do. We forget how how great it is to love one another. And so, uh, this is my lesson this morning, and I I hope that it'll be a, a, an enjoyment to you. I hope that you can. Think about it for uh, the week, and uh, maybe please turn over in John 15, read that, and, and look and see what you can, you can, uh, how how great a blessing it is. Thank you all so much.